they can get to give their children something to eat. This is a system where thousands of people die every day from diseases that could easily be prevented, treated, or cured. All these things stem, stem from the same fundamental source. The reality that everything under this system is aimed at bringing back maximum profits for the capitalist rulers. I mean, millions of people all over the world have to work together to produce everything that gets produced. But then the things that they produce end up belonging to a handful of capitalists who own and control the factories, the mines, large farms, and other ways to produce wealth. And on that basis, dominate the whole damn world. That's why the medicine that could be used to prevent, treat, or cure those diseases that I talked about doesn't get produced because there's no profit for the capitalist in it. That's why farmland gets diverted from producing food people need to eat. And that's also why the powers that be unleash their cops to brutalize and even murder black and Latino youth in cities across the country. It all stems from that basic contradiction of capitalism. But things don't have to be this way, sisters and brothers. It's possible to make revolution, to take power from the hands of the capitalist imperialists who run things today, to put that power in the hands of the people and use that power to produce everything that's needed to meet the needs of the people, and to overcome the relations left over from the old society like the oppression of black people and other nationalities or the oppression of women. And it's possible to do that as part of totally transforming society and humanity itself. Because after a revolution is made, we bring into being a new form of, of government, a new form of, of state power. And this new form would be what we call a dictatorship of the proletariat. Now, unlike this society, which is a dictatorship of the capitalist class, this revolutionary form of government would represent the rule of the formerly exploited majority of society over the minority of overthrown exploiters and oppressors. And the way it would meet people's needs and transform society and humanity would be through involving millions of the people who were involved in making revolution, involving them in the actual running of society after power was seized. And this new revolutionary form of government would strive to constantly draw more and more people into the administering of society with the aim of reaching the point where there was no longer a need for a government to sit up on top of people and direct things from that perspective. And it would foster an atmosphere of exploration, diversity, questioning, and dissent involving all kinds of different people, including even people who don't agree with the overall direction the revolutionary government is taking things. And see, this is important, and this relates to a point that Connie was making about how Bob Avakian, the leader of the Revolutionary Communist Party, has built on the experience of revolutions that went before, but taken them farther. And this is something we could talk about later. Through this approach, the revolutionary government would be trying to understand reality, lead people in understanding reality as deeply as possible, in order to transform it and end exploitation once and for all and achieve a classless communist world. See, in this kind of society, we wouldn't need police to enforce oppressive relations because it would be uprooting those oppressive relations. There would be a need to maintain security in society, but that would be approached as part of that overall process that I talked about of, you know, changing, getting rid of the relations left over from capitalism and transforming society and humanity. And there would be a people's security force, I don't want to call them police, because you know what you've seen what police do in this society. This people's security force would sooner take a bullet itself than kill somebody who needed their help or who wasn't doing anything wrong. And even in dealing with people who were engaged in criminal activity, the revolutionary security force would want to stop them from doing that, but they'd stop them in order to get to the point where we could get them to see that what they were doing had no place in the kind of world we were involved in bringing into being. Not stopping them from taking them out or brutalizing them. See, so this is where things need to go and can go. So what does that have to do with what I started out talking about? The brutal brutality directed at black people and in particular the murder of Sean Bell. <laughs> Well, when something like the murder of Sean Bell happens, 
it's actually very, very important that people who see the need for revolution get busy in relation to it. And there's a couple things you got to do. You have to build resistance to this because, like I said, no one should want to live in a society where things like this happen again and again and again. And that's just the reality. I mean, there's a book here called The Stolen Lives Project, which has documented more than 2,000 cases of loss of life at the hands of the police in the United States in the 1990s. Most of these victims of killer cops were black or Latino. Most of them were young. More than half of them were unarmed and not involved in any criminal activity when they were killed by police. So this does happen again and again. So you have to build resistance to it because it is no good. It's horrible. It shouldn't be happening and it needs to stop. And you also have to spread the message that the system is the problem and revolution is the solution. And a lot can be accomplished through doing this combination of things. Because look, police brutality, police murder, and the criminalization of a whole generation of youth, and the way this especially targets black and Latino people in this society, is a major way that this system comes down on the people. Many, many people were mad as hell when they heard about Sean's murder and wanted to do something about it. Many deeply questioned why this happens again and again and what, if anything, can be done to stop it. And some question the legitimacy of a setup where these kind of outrages are perpetrated against the people repeatedly and nothing is done to stop them. Now, I talked about getting from where we are today to the point where a revolution could be made. And let me just read to you uh, a little bit from an article called Some Crucial Points of Revolutionary Orientation in Opposition to Infantile Posturing and Distortion of Revolution. And it talks about the situation in which a revolution would be possible in a country like this. In a country like the United States, the revolutionary overthrow of this system can only be achieved once there is a major qualitative change in the nature of the objective situation, such that society as a whole is in the grip of a profound crisis, owing fundamentally to the nature and workings of the system itself. And along with that, there is the emergence of a revolutionary people numbering in the millions and millions, conscious of the need for revolutionary change and determined to fight for it. So that's the kind of situation and the kind of things that need to, to come together to make a revolution possible in a country like this. Now, if in the midst of a development like the police murder of Sean Bell and the exoneration of his murderers, Many people can come to understand the truth that this brutality is built into the very fabric of the system and it will take communist revolution to get rid of it once and for all. If people can get a sense that there are others from many different walks of life who can be one to join in the fight against the system, if people can get a sense of their strength and the enemy's vulnerability, it would be possible to make great strides in forging the kind of revolutionary people needed to seize an opening to make revolution when the time is right. At the same time, broad and determined resistance to an outrage like this can deepen the trouble the authorities face in keeping their setup in effect and even contribute to the development of the kind of profound crisis that I was talked about in what I was just reading from. So to just sum this point up, an important part of getting from today to the point where it would be possible to go for revolution in a country like this is a process that we call fighting the power and transforming the people for revolution.